All right, so I officially suck at recording myself in races. The half marathon especially, I feel like anything shorter distance than a marathon, it's gonna be impossible for me to record myself. I don't, I think any race, honestly. So I'm sorry about the lack of footage in the race, but there was a good amount on the, the beginning and the end. Started off the morning at like 5 a.m., got up, showered up right away, and got a breakfast in, got coffee in, bagel, peanut butter, get some quick carbs. I popped a Claritin because spring allergies are rampant in the Midwest right now. Just took some water, didn't have any electrolyte supplement. I drank a liquid IV the day before. I ran out of element, so I'm gonna get some more of that. And I, I would typically drink a bottle of that pre-race. I don't think that affected me. I didn't feel dehydrated in the race, but uh, post-race I sucked down an entire water bottle, an entire prime. I just needed even more. So maybe I was dehydrated. I ran this race last year. I got sixth place, as I mentioned. Uh, I knew I had the capability of maybe going top three and really wanted to crack the 120 barrier. As the race approached, we realized very quickly that the temperature was not going to be what it was forecasted a week out. It was saying it was gonna be between 40 and 60 Fahrenheit, and it ended up being about 65 degrees at race start. Made sure I got there with enough time, which I was happy about because I was able to park far away, get a mile run in as a warm up in the parking lot near uh, the race village. I'm walking on over to kind of the starting village. It's a nice little uh, industrial district. Got a, a line of porta potties, and uh, yeah, hopefully a couple people said they want to come up, and say hi. Hopefully, I can say some hi to some people. I'm starting to get really nervous. I start to feel kind of cold when I get nervous. So it's not that cold out. It's like 62 degrees right now, 65 degrees. It's gonna get up to like high 60s, I think, in the middle of the race. So see how we get on. Best race ever. It's a beautiful day. All right, getting a little warm up in. Trying to do like half mile to a mile. Everything's getting all antsy up in there. Lots of nervous energy, but it's good. Nice and warm today, but not too warm. Super easy warm up. Just get the legs going, blood flowing. Get over to the start corral. All right, just did my classic pee in the bushes. I'm ready to go. We're about 15 minutes out. Walking on over. It's gonna be toasty. I already feel it, already sweating after a warm up mile. I uh, ran into a couple people who told me they would be there. It was really cool. I, I got Andre on camera at the beginning. That race pen is super exciting. Any race pen is super exciting, but I don't know. I just really enjoy this race. Uh, some really good energy at this race. I knew last year I took off way too hard and I didn't want to make that same mistake. Kind of made the same mistake. Uh, I think I just thought I had more fitness than I did. It's packed a little tight. Wow, lots of crowds this time. All right. Chicago Line Half Marathon. Sub 120, let's go. So I went out at like, they didn't have a mile one marker, which was frustrating, unless I just didn't see it. But my first mile, let me, oh, I'm screen recording here so I can show you. First mile was 601, so just like right at six flat pace. Second mile was 603, and I maintained that for about six miles, anywhere from, uh, I even dropped the 556 on mile four. So anywhere from like the 555 to 605 window, I was cruising there for the first six miles. And uh, I got this one clip going over really the only hill in the race, which is an overpass over the highway, which sucks. Uh, I was able to pass somebody on that bridge. And then I think I moved my way into second place at that point. By mile six, I think I knew that it wasn't going to be my day because it just became incredibly hard to maintain that six to 605 pace. But it was so cool to pass because you pass half marathoners and marathoners going back through the course. And there was like half a dozen people that said, let's go Floberg. So thank you if you're watching this and you did that. Thank you so much. I'm sorry if I didn't give it back all that much because I was dying. The same kind of thing happened to me in this race last year from like six to 10. I really, really started feeling it. And what's really difficult about a race like this is that it's so lonely. There just aren't many people around you. No one's pacing you. You can't really work off people. Michael, the guy who ended up getting first place passed me, I think at about six and a half, about the halfway mark. And that was a bit deflating. That put me back into third, I knew. And I could see them on the switchbacks coming back. He even missed a turn. So he, he probably could have gotten an even faster time. Um, but yeah, I just kept suffering through uh, miles six through nine. And then this was the second clip in the race where I was embarrassed to say it out loud because there were so many people passing me. I'm absolutely cooked. 
I was truly officially cooked at that point. I was surprised to see that my mile splits, I was manually splitting every mile. I was surprised to see I was still going about 615 and I was wondering, can I suffer at this pace the rest of the race? I couldn't. I ended up dropping to 620, 625. And I mean, just looking at my heart rate, I was in the 180s the whole second half of the race, which I am never in the 180s. Uh, the, the last time I saw that was in New York and we all know how that went. I'm gonna tell you, there were, there were like five or six different times where I contemplated just stopping and walking. And I kept the phrase going, It's everyone's been saying it online, if not now, when? Uh, I think that was a lot harder this time because I was like, there's other opportunities. Like I could run another half marathon. They're kind of everywhere. And that kind of, that stuff kind of started creeping in my mind. But that phrase still kept me going strong because I was like, I really only plan on racing this again in September. Like, just do it now. You have an opportunity now. You're healthy now. Just go and suffer longer. So it was a lot of cyclical dark places, not a whole lot of getting out of the dark places because it just kept hurting and hurting and hurting. So I dropped to a basically around 250 marathon pace, the last four miles, right, floating right around 630, 625 to 630. And there's this long two mile stretch on a frontage road next to the highway that was into the wind, a bit uphill, baking in the sun not ideal. This is where I start counting backwards. So I knew I had about 12 minutes left with just under two miles left. So I started counting backwards 60 seconds at a time just to clip off minutes. And I did this in the marathon as well. And I actually saw the guy that was in second place, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile ahead of me. And I saw him start to fade. And I started to wonder like, Maybe I, maybe I can catch him, I don't know. And so I started putting in more effort and you could see in my last mile there at six, my 626 pace mile on mile 13, I was at 186 BPM. So like I was, I was redlining and I was pretty much just putting everything I could out there all the way until that sprint finish where I did pass him in like the last 100 meters, but my heart rate was at 193. <laughs> so I'm looking at this, I'm like, hey, I put everything out there. 21:48. I didn't stop. I didn't give up. I was stoked with that. So that was really cool. Um, again, didn't go under 120, but I'm realizing, not to make any excuses, I'm realizing I ran my fastest marathon I ever have, 248. I took a week off after the race, took another week off with surgery. So I only got like 10 miles in each of those weeks, put a 30 mile week in, and then maybe another like 25, 30 mile week. So it was, it was not ideal. It was like a, this weird game of trying to taper, but not really because I wasn't coming off of any volume. I was actually building back up. And something I didn't really mention the week leading up to the race was my body didn't feel great leading up to this half marathon. The whole week before the race, I was like, this doesn't feel like a taper. Like my body doesn't feel fresh. And so that was a weird feeling to have going into a race. Just making me realize and helping me learn, like if you really want to achieve time goals, you need to have a strategic approach leading up to a race. And I had that the mindset going in. It was like, this is not a peak race at all. This is me just seeing where my fitness is still. And with that being the case, I'm actually really happy with this performance with under 122 at a 614 average pace. I think it's really indicative of my uh, my fitness right now makes me really excited about where it will be when I race this distance again in early September. So that's super cool. Got through the finish line. I interviewed Andre. Yeah, according to my watch, 131. Let's go. Uh, and still, you're going for you're going like right at 130. 34. I was thinking 134, but I didn't really. Dude, that's, is that that's your second half marathon? Sure, third. How much you get previously? 140, 134, and right. 131. But it's not official. I have to. Tell I feel like I feel like on a colder day you would have like went down to 130 because that was so hot. Andre subscribes to the channel. What's up, Andre? I'm sure you're watching this. Uh, it was really cool to meet him, uh, see him in real life, and uh, congrats to him. He got a PR with a 131. And uh, then, yeah, we just enjoyed our time. It was really fun to just take time as a family. My whole family was there. We got our fruit cups and uh, we're hanging out. And I actually got a second place medal. That was pretty fun. And it was, I just love race environments. It doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter if it's a big city marathon or a local race like this. I just love cheering people on and seeing people smile like going into the finish shoot uh so we were waiting for shua his first half marathon he sent it he did it and i ran the course backwards cheering people on as they're coming in found shua <laughs> come on now how we doing My legs just come, on. Up. come on come on we're almost there <laughs> we're almost there <laughs> Suckery! Oh, 
Ah. Half marathon, no training. Yeah. Honestly, pretty good for no Not training. Bad. Not bad. Brought him in for his final half mile, which he ran. He ran the final half mile. Like I said, I don't want to make any excuses, but like the heat definitely was a huge factor in this race. And I feel like if it was in the 40 to 50 degree window, I feel like I could have run at least a minute faster. Historically, I have not run well in warm weather. That's a caveat as well. I'm not mad. Got a new PR and know that I can go well below that um, in a few months. So just excited. Overall, really happy. Uh, no idea what this video is going to turn out like. It's kind of a hot mess. I did a terrible job recording in the race. But uh, as I mentioned, I'll be running 5K races, 10K races this summer. And we're going to be building up to crack that 242 in the fall in the marathon in Chicago. So be on the lookout. Get excited about all that's coming on this channel. We have a little mini doc coming up that's going to be pretty special. Like this video if you liked it. Thanks for making it this far. Till next time, Flowberg runs. I'll be there. Hopefully you will be too.